So my name's Hayden Groves. I'm here at the College of West London. I'm going to be doing a masterclass for the students. Um, I've picked a, a dish that's out of Back in the Saddle, my award-winning charity cookbook. And I've picked that dish, uh, tiramisu, because it's very popular and for me was something that we had when we were in the Veneto region, so that's uh, near Venice in, in, in Italy. And um, it's a dish that I think is misunderstood in the UK, uh, whether it's the addition of, I've seen it with chocolate cake, with cream, with bananas even. Um, a classic tiramisu is essentially eggs, mascarpone, sugar, and some form of either masala, a brandy, a, 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 a fortified spirit. So we start off making the, um, making the tiramisu by separating the eggs. We're using um, free range eggs, lion stamped, very important because they're inoculated against salmonella. However, we are making a Italian meringue. So we are cooking the egg whites with one part of the stage and with the yolk, we're doing a sabayon. So firstly, we make a sugar syrup. 70, for this recipe, we're using 70 grams of caster sugar 40 grams of water, and we just create a syrup to 118 degrees. In the meantime, we start whisking up the four egg whites. Um, I'm gonna be using a hand whisk today because it's a little bit easier for, for the small volume. We pour in the sugar syrup very slowly in while we're whisking up. So the egg whites are already at so, um, soft peak, and then we'll, we carry on whisking until the, the sugar syrup has been added and the meringue is almost gone cool. And that's our Italian meringue. because once it gets to 118, as I take it off, then it reaches 120, which is softball. And then um, that, that's the temperature that we need to do the Italian meringue. And, and again, you could be using just um, um, egg whites folded in, but I also feel with the Italian meringue, I'm adding the sugar element, but as in, in the egg white, that's already dissolved, rather than cast the sugar or ice the sugar into the mascarpone. And I've given stability to the egg white as well. And thirdly, I'm cooking the egg white by adding the sugar syrup. I think with everything, you've got a very important that you, you separate your eggs properly. If your, um, your whites aren't gonna whisk, if there's any specks of yolk in there, so just be careful, take, take a couple of extra seconds, don't rush your separating your eggs, because if you do, it's hard work scooping out a bit of yolk from your egg white. So we've done one half, which is our egg white. And then we are using the yolks and we're going to create sabayon. So over a pan of barely simmering water, the yolks, we're going to whisk with some more sugar and we're just going to create a light airy sabayon. And that's our other part of our egg that goes into. So we're using the whole egg, but we're splitting it. One half for meringue and the other half is a sabayon. Sabayon is just essentially a light airy yolk with the addition of of sugar and, and, and a flavouring, but we're not adding the flavouring because the flavouring is going to come later in the mascarpone. You just need to be careful how you control the heat. You don't want the, um, the base of the bowl to be directly in contact with the water because you just want to create steam. It's a steam jacket, so you just want to create warmth there. And it helps with the volume and you're cooking the yolks. The yolk, you will just want to watch the temperature underneath. You don't scramble those yolks because it could, um, and, and, and quite helpful is like a tablespoon of water just to give a little bit more volume to your yolks and just whisk and keep whisking and just watch the temperature. It's almost better to start off slightly slower and then build up the temperature rather than, than being hot and you'll find that it's a bit like making a, a hollandaise sauce. You don't want to be having scrambled egg around the edge of the, edge of the bowl. Next, we add our yolks to our mascarpone. So our mascarpone, not straight out the fridge, it's best to just let that just come up to room temperature about 15 minutes. And just give it a, a slight loosen. It just helps with the addition of the yolk. We add our yolk in the form of our sabayon next to our mascarpone. And again, you can be quite vigorous with that. And then we add our, um, our Italian meringue and then we start folding that. And we'll do that in three stages. First can be quite aggressive, just getting the uh, mascarpone and egg yolk mix used to the, the lightness of the meringue, and then we add the meringue. 
again in, in, in um, two further stages. Mascarpone is essentially a very light, creamy um, cheese. It's an Italian soft cream cheese. It's, it's a very neutral, milky flavour, essentially. This recipe calls for salvadelli biscuits, which are like your um, sponge fingers, but they're Italian, slightly larger and slightly drier. Here we're using homemade sponge fingers that the students have made. So uh, when making those sponge fingers, you'll find that they're very soft. They're ideal for a bavoir, but you want to just leave those to dry out without any color on a low temperature oven if you're making them yourself. And the reason being, we want them to absorb as much espresso as possible and keep their integrity before obviously you line them up in, in, in your bowl. Good coffee, you don't really want to be using any instant, but instant you can if it's a good quality instant. It needs to be strong. We flavour that with some masala or some brandy. And um, so it just had some little warmth to it. And you soak just until you can see that the um, sponge finger is well absorbed and you line those out in the bottom of your bowl. just adds that um, it just cuts that richness and it just adds that that touch of um, luxury essentially but very much less is more you don't want to be eating that uh, tiramisu and as you get through that creaminess and suddenly get lots of raw alcohol and it just needs to be there as, as a pleasing tone it complements the coffee and adds a, 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 di a dimension to the, the creamy mascarpone mix So once we've done our first layer of sponge fingers, then we dust liberally with a cocoa powder before our first layer of our mascarpone mix. So you really get that differentiation in, in colour as well as flavour. Then your next layer of sponge fingers, then your final layer of your mascarpone mix, and then a really good dusting of cocoa powder. And what's, what's super important then is to let it rest in the fridge and just let all of those flavours just mingle the sponge fingers absorb, the salvadelli biscuits just absorb the moisture from the mascarpone. It's a very light mix and it just allows it just to get to know each other. Then when you remove it from the fridge, a little final dusting of cocoa just to, just to sort of dress it up again because the cocoa will go slightly damp on top. And, um, and just serve it on the table, large spoon, several bowls and just watch. The, the, I, I haven't had a bad review about this one, certainly at dinner parties. Good quality cocoa, yeah, certainly steer away from the drinking chocolate. It's got to be a good quality cocoa powder and be liberal with it. So I won National Chef of the Year in 2013, sort of the pinnacle of my career really, just to be included in some of those household names such as uh, Gordon Ramsay and being a Hall of Fame is just, uh, you know, it was just a dream come true really and um, I think I never gave up. It was my fourth time of uh, entering, third time in a final. I got third before um, but to, to stand on the top step was just uh, just absolutely amazing. And I suppose what it allowed me to do is um, leverage some of that success I had in 2013 that when I rode the Tour de France in 2015, one day before the pros, it helped certainly helped with my fundraising and I raised £63,000 that year for cure leukaemia, which I'm probably equally as proud of as, as National Chef of the Year because anyone can write a book, and as per Ratatouille, anyone can cook, but to go and raise money as well substantially is uh, something that I'm equally as proud of.